Hello everyone and welcome to the Beard of Geeks, the weekly grab bag of topics covering movies, comics, video games and TV. My name is Jags, I am the Beard Master with me today, Bobby Baxter, the Bearded Mountain. How you going? G'day, g'day. How are you bud? Yeah, I'm pretty good. Uh, what's happened to your face? Uh, yeah, I had a bit of a <laughs> shaving accident. <laughs> It was about two weeks ago. It's it's taken a while to grow back, but uh, dish. Yeah, um, my I was my birthday a couple of weeks ago, and my wife got me a, a new razor, and I was like, oh, like an electrical thing. And what got, is she thinking? Oh, well, you know, it's, she went in there with, with the best intentions in mind. She it's just like I, I need. She took in a photo of me with uh, <laughs> and like showed it to the person behind the thing and said, "This is the size and the caliber of his beard." You know, have like, you seen this little boy? <laughs> But she took in this photo and she's like, this is my husband's beard, you know, he, he's very <laughs> proud of it. <laughs> he likes to look after it. Um, you know, give me a, sell me a razor that it, it's not going to like shave the whole damn thing off or, or like freak him out or whatever. And she, and so they did the whole sales pitch on her and sold her this like big primo razor thing and got it home. Anyway, I finally unwrapped it and, and I was like all excited and went to use it. Let's take this thing for a test run. Hell yeah. And it's got like, you know, 57,000 attachments on it and stuff. Wet and dry? Uh, I think. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Primo. Uh, but yeah, bloody. So I get out the thing and I'm like, okay, looking through the book and I get the, the longest attachment possible. I'm like, <laughs> I can't go wrong with this. I'll just like max it out to the... To the longest thing and give it a whirl because I'm like I've been doing my shit for like by eye all these years. Of course, years. of course. You know, I, I I fluff it out like an afro and then I squint one eye and I just like <laughs> you did the Clint Eastwood in the mirror. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you feel lucky, punk. <laughs> Shave my sides. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I, I was like, went all gung ho. I was like, new razor. Got all excited. Put the longest attachment on. Went zzz, up the side, but I did it. I started at the top where I usually do, which is like the sideburn, but that's the worst bit because once you go there, then you're like, you you're fucked. You're fucked. So I zit it off and it's just left this massive, like you've mowed the lawn slime <laughs> straight up the side. And, and uh, she was standing next to me when it, when it happened and she was just like, oh my God. <laughs> and I was like, fuck, how do I fix this? Like, oh no. So I had to go to the goatee, shave off the sides and. And see what was under there. It's been probably about 10 years since I've seen what my cheeks look like. <laughs> it was funny because I got a Snapchat from you and I never get Snapchats from you. And no. I'm like, oh, this must be good. I knew uh, I had to send it on Snapchat <laughs> to make it like more important because you, you guys never get Snapchats from <laughs> me. No, no, not even a photo, MMS, never. So I opened the Snapchat and I can't even remember what it said. It's just this selfie of you just with this goatee and these beautiful like glistening cheeks and i was just like what the <laughs> fuck i was like because there's three things in life bobby will never part with his wife his daughter and his beard <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> and one of them was gone and i'm like what's happened tell uh, me <laughs> and i just text you and i'm like what the fuck's happened <laughs> what have you done yeah when it oh, went a little close on the uh on the old razor but man i did that like Two and a half months ago, mm. I did the same thing. Turns out that bloody razor, though, like, so my wife got upsold with all the attachments and shit. And I was looking through the book afterwards going, well, fuck, I'm not going to screw it up again next time. I'll, <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll read through this thing properly. I'm looking at the attachments. You need a fucking screwdriver to take off the thing to change the different levels of the thing. So that's some serious hardware you got. There. I know. <laughs> I'm like, know. Who's fucking got the, the drill bit out in the, in the bathroom just. <laughs> Fucking change Haley's just like, neat, neat. you okay in there? What's going on? Just, I just got the power drill. <laughs> Manscaping. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of funny. You know what the good thing is, though? When your beard grows back out, you're just going to have like this massive goat in the front. You're going to mm. have like some serious Leonidas shit going. Yeah, it's just going to go like massively long. So, <laughs> How about your, uh, your uh, beard? Your beard's looking pretty good. Uh, I had a little bit of a trim today, just yep. a little bit of trim. I'm trying not to touch it too much, but I found out, like, you see all these photos of these epic beards, and you're like, wow, they're amazing. <laughs> and then I look at mine in the mirror, and I was like, why doesn't mine look like that? <laughs> but mine's just like possum's asshole. It's just like bushy <laughs> fucking hairs going everywhere. It's like copper wires growing out of my face. It's, it's fucked. But... I've gotten to, I was growing the stash out like over the top lift 
um over the top lip yep. beg your pardon but i'm i'm mad fucker for ice cream and every time you have ice <laughs> cream it's just fucking in your shit everywhere yep. you gotta go in and wash that shit so i got I, I have this habit it's really weird tell me if it's weird because when my when my mustache grows real long on the sides mm-hmm. i have this tendency like when i'm not sort of well when I'm doing something, when I'm distracted, I'll stick my tongue out and I'll like lick the end of my mustache and like curl it with my tongue. It's this weird thing I do. Is that weird? <laughs> no, because I like I do that, but I, <laughs> but I, I bite bite it. So <laughs> like, you told me you do that. Yeah, when you told me you, yeah. I started doing that as well. That hair's a bit long. Ping. <laughs> it's like terrible. It it's terrible. My my wife finds beard hairs all over the lounge room. <laughs> <laughs> But what I start, I just get the, uh, just get the little, uh, the little, uh, silver set out. Don't even know what it's called. The little grooming set. Yeah. Your tweezers and all that. Your little pair of scissors. Your little man. And purse. I just, you just trim, just trim that top lip, you know? Mm. Just to the, uh, just to the top of the old lip line. Yeah. Just so I don't get any shit, like, hanging over. Um, uh, overhang. I'm, I'm a mess. I just let mine go. <laughs> yeah. Mine, mine just fucking goes everywhere, man. Like, I can't control it. Like, yep. I'm trying to grow this beard out. Like, I haven't really touched it in probably, what are we? Like three months, mm. I haven't touched it, but it's just like I'm trying to like I've got like the neck, I've got it like cut just above the Adam's apple, yeah. So you know, just like round it nicely, but all my shit like under my jawline is like real fucking like long and stringy, and you can like you can pick the two out, and it's like they don't blend together properly. I'm like, when's this gonna blend in? When's it gonna <laughs> be an awesome beard? Or I do I get, have to do something to it? I don't get that like massive mane that dudes get. Like mine gets nice and thick. And you know we're, we're pretty similar bearded wise, but um, let's rub beards together. <laughs> we might not. <laughs> we're stuck. <laughs> but you see those dudes? They got like they look like a fucking lion. You know they're like yeah. all their shits out there here. My, mine doesn't do that because it starts like curling up back on itself. Yeah, that's what so mine just, does. Like it just it it does it gets to a point where it never goes any longer than like yeah. it, it's long as fuck if i straight if i pull at it yeah you know if i if i got a hair straightener out maybe <laughs> I, yeah that's a good idea that's an investment though <laughs> that sounds like a fucking burnt chin waiting to happen <laughs> <laughs> oh, <fuck. laughs> yeah. but uh, yeah mine's just like curlers like automatic curlers are, are uh are in there just fucking yeah yeah afroing it up I don't know. I, I'm thinking about getting like some of that charcoal, like beard shampoo. Have you seen the shit? No. Yeah, it's like you know you, you squeeze it out of the tube and it's like grey toothpaste and you're like right. you watch this video of this guy and it's just like massaging in his beard. And I'm like that looks pretty nice. That looks like pretty comfortable, you know, rubbing it in. And then he's just like washing his beard and like you've never had a better beard after you charcoal shampooed or something. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Do you yeah. Know. <laughs> <laughs> It's just like 70s porno beard. Yeah. <laughs> beard porn. <laughs> they would rub beards together. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's like steel what it sounds wool. like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But no, like, I, I just wish I had, like, a voluptuous beard. Like, it looks good. Like, mm. there's this one guy at work. Like, I see him sort of every now and then. He's like, nice beard, man. I'm like, thanks. I have the best beard, like at work, but <laughs> you know, it's not. It's not, it's just not it's, filling it's in. Hanging on the wall in the staff room, like yeah. employee beard of the month. Beard of the month. <laughs> Brent Jago for like three <laughs> years consecutive. <laughs> Inverted commas, beard master. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I got I, this name I never, for you. I, I, should, I should come back to that beard okay, thing. Okay, go again. Because I know, ne- like, I have had that comment for years by just random passers by and stuff. Nice but I never beard, really, thanks. really know what to, where to go with it. Like, yeah. You know, yep. Thanks for, uh. Thanks for noticing. Thanks for noticing my laziness. <laughs> it is, it is on my face. The, the first place you look. <laughs> my lack of, uh, general grooming. This uh, is the result of this. <laughs> mm. yeah. Do you have any sweet grooming tips for our bearded listeners out there? Uh. I mean, like, the only thing I really do is what I said before, like, fluff mm. it out like an afro. You afro it out. Manual. Like, yep. I I sort of just, like, I would comb it and then sort of just, like, all the spindly bits, like the coppery bits, mm. I will just, like, trim that down, right? Yep. But then I'd come back in the bathroom, like, an hour later and look in the mirror and it'd just be the same. There'd be, like, a whole new set of, like, spindly copperness, yeah. <laughs> like, poking out. I'm like, oh, man, motherfucker. <laughs> and then you told me, I was like, what? What do you do? Well, like, what's your secret, man? Like, tell me. And you're like, oh, I just push it all up, afro it out as much as I can, and then just eyeball it. <laughs> I'm like, 
that's it makes sense. Takes and then up. I did that, and I'm like, whoa, this is this is amazing. It's a bit scary because you have to go like full. Yeah, manual. you got to eyeball it. Yeah, if you sneeze like, uh, or something, you're fucked. You, like you're- Iron Man in Civil War when he's targeting <laughs> goes out. I'm gonna eyeball it. <laughs> 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 Yeah. No, I got some beard oil with my thing. Um, I've only tried it the one time, but... I got some I, beard I, oil I off it. Pat. Did you get it? Yeah, Pat gifted me with some beard oil. Yep. And I just, like, how much do you use? And I'm just like, drop, 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 but that's, like, too much. And then I put it on, but the problem is, like, I go to put it on, like, I have it, like, on my palms, like, I, you know, rub it in. Mm. And then I go to do it, like, on my face, but then I, like, rub it down my beard, and then I look in the mirror... And I've just got, like, beard oil, like, all over my cheek. And that shit's, like, real greasy and fucking oily. Obviously oily. Yeah. <laughs> you just go to town like a fucking toddler in the makeup kit. Just like, wow. Yeah. In the eyebrows and everything. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, like, it looks good. But I don't know. It just, I don't know if it's because I've got, like, a mainly ginger beard. Because when I put the beard oil in... Mm. My shit just looks like more shiny and coppery. Like mm. it looks more oily. Like you haven't washed your beard in like a year. Like what the <laughs> fuck? Yeah. And I'm just like, I don't know. It's just, I don't know. If it doesn't really work for my beard because it's not really as flattering or I'm not doing it right or because they say yeah. like people like put the, apply the uh, two drops of beard oil to your hands, massage it into your palms and then just rub it through your beard and then just, you know, style it or whatever. I'm like, yeah, okay. And I just do that and it's like, yeah, like rubbing it through steel wool on your face. Mm. And then when you go to like style it and that, you're like, yeah, that kind of looks good. As soon as you move your head about and like, because I got a long beard, as soon as it like rubs on your shirt, you look down, you've just got like beard oil on your shirt. And <laughs> yeah. It's just like, and then it just, you got to keep going like that, like shaping it. And then you get oil on your hands. And weird. Uh, it's I a weird know. slippery sensation, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. And, and all day, like, because I've only done it the one time so far. And it's like, I it's like coconut smell or something. The one that's, that mine is but it just made me hungry all day i was like real keen for a bounty i just feel like a fucking bounty <laughs> <laughs> you fucking stole my joke then i was like oh, coconut bounty boom <laughs> so i got a bit of news you want me to run through that give it to us do you that want me to run, run through that that your fucked up sentence fucked my next sentence up. i'm like, just dyslexic man seriously yeah. no i'm out of practice i haven't been on the show for a while so yeah <laughs> Let's do it, eh? Let's let's talk. Let's conversate. Let's try. <laughs> uh, season three of Stranger Things. Mm-hmm. Episode amount confirmed? Yep. We're going back to eight episodes. Okay. Season one, we had eight episodes. Season two, we had nine. Mm-hmm. Back in season three, we're getting eight again. Okay. Which is, you know, we've talked about this before, but the episode where Eleven goes to, what is it, Philly? Mm. Philadelphia or Chicago or wherever they go. Yeah, that place, mm. that city. You know, but that had to happen for her, you know, storyline to sort of come 360. Yeah. Or 180. Full circle, as they say. 360. Mm. Fucking hell, what's wrong with me? I was never good at math. <laughs> <laughs> um, The only problem is we may not get it till 2019. Thoughts? Mm, it's going to be a long year. But no Game of Thrones. No anything. Game of Thrones. <laughs> Gonna have to find other shows to watch. Remind me of will that, that be, later. I'll, will um, that be Halloween 2019, you reckon? I don't reckon. If we're not getting it till 2019, surely we'll get it earlier than Halloween. There's no way. Well, I don't know. Maybe they just... I don't, I don't know. If ne- it's something Netflix really worry about. Like, mm. Game of Thrones is going to be on in April. We can't debut in April. But it's it's Netflix. So what do they care? Yeah. And if people want to watch these shows, they'll watch Game of Thrones and then Stranger Things. Yeah. Because they'll get one episode of GOT and then they're like, right, I'm going to watch all these Stranger Things in a day and a half. Yeah. People just fucking snap this shit up, like, straight away now. Snaffle it up. Yeah. (laughs) You're not really competing. Because the old days, it was competing for airtime kind of thing. Absolutely. Whereas now, you... you, Fucking home improvement on one channel. Sabrina the Teenage Witch on the other channel. What are you going to watch? Yeah, fucking none of blue, that. blue fucking healers. <laughs> blue healers on Southern Cross. <laughs> yeah. Coronation Street on ABC. <laughs> the Sullivans. The Sullivans. The Flying Doctors, a country practice. <laughs> fucking <Fuck it, no. laughs> the Sullivans. <laughs> um, Jessica Jones season two hits in, what are we today? What's it, the fifth on Monday? So it's next week. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Season two of Jessica Jones next week. Cool. That is cool. I haven't actually watched any of the Defenders or... 
you know, really... I, I think I've fallen off all of them pretty much since um, maybe Iron Fist came out, I think. The mm. first one. So I've got a bit of catching up. I don't know if I like if anything Jessica Jones related happened in the Defenders that I'll kind of need to. She was in it, but it was more just nothing really like relevant to her. Yeah. Particularly, it was just more. I don't want to be. Here. What am I doing here? Let's get pissy. Sounds I'm bashing like shit up just because I have to because I'm stuck here and I'm just going to beat people up. Yeah. Yep. Did you watch all of Luke Cage? No, I think I only got. I didn't about mind Luke Cage. I I liked it because it was quite, it was different enough from the other shows. Mm. It was sort of a bit of a breath of fresh air. Yeah, thought you might have been inspired being to Luke Cage's bar. Yeah, I think I did watch it. Uh, like right after I got back from New York. I wonder they weren't playing it in that bar. I don't know if it was out when we were. No, there. it wouldn't have been out yet. But yeah. no, it would have been because you recognised it. Oh no! Oh no! It was in Jessica it. Jones. Yeah. Beg your pardon. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because we were staying in Harlem, and um, if if Luke Cage had already been out by then, we would have been walking around Harlem going like, fuck, oh, well, uh, uh, that's that move, yeah. that's that move. <laughs> Am I going to the next thing, eh? Mm-hmm. Let's conversate some more, shall we? Lettuce. Lettuce. <laughs> that's what Pat's on at the moment, the lettuce diet. <laughs> yeah. He's lost three kilos today. He said today, though. Just today. Just today. Fucking hell. I lost three kilos today. <laughs> Water and lettuce. I think you might be sick. This <laughs> <laughs> bad stomach flu or something yeah. he's got. Yeah. Um, we've gotten word of the songs that are going to be used in the live action Lion King film. Okay. Hakuna Matata. Mm-hmm. I just can't wait to be king. Mm-hmm. Pearl of a song. Can you feel the love tonight? Of course. And Circle of Life. Right. But the problem I have is the best song in the movie is not in there. Be Prepared by Scar. Oh, yeah. Now Scar sings that song, Be Prepared. Mm. That's a fucking bitchin' song and they're not even using it in the movie. Or are uh, you aching for a beacon? <laughs> for some beacon? <laughs> you could be a big pig too. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> that uh, better be in there. <laughs> <laughs> I like that song. Like, that's probably my favourite song in that movie. Mm. Yeah. I think it's one of the best, like, villain songs of any sort of animated feature that Disney have done. Uh, Hellfire from Hunchback of Notre Dame. You haven't seen that, though? No. That song's fucking epic. Yeah. Mm. You should watch that movie. Yeah, I should. I always forget about that. Do you think um, live-action Lion King is going to fuck us up emotionally? I don't know. Probably not going to watch it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm... Live action Jungle Book didn't really do anything for me, so I'm not. I'm kind of curious enough that I feel like I have to watch it. Hmm. I don't know if I necessarily want to, but I feel like I have to. Yeah. Just like, how are they going to fuck this up? Yeah. <laughs> but it's yeah. The Lion King, you know? Yeah. That movie's nearly fucking, what, 25 years old? Yeah. Or is that my math? 95, was it? Or 94? Was it 94? I think it was 94, wasn't it? Yeah, probably 94. Fuck, man, that makes me feel old. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'll uh, see what it happens when it when it comes out, like what you know, what people are saying about it. But I mean everyone was kind of raving about the, the Jungle Book live action movie as well when that came out and I watched it and it just didn't didn't really connect with me at all. Medium. To the, yeah. Was it the C G you just couldn't yeah, connect part, with the, uh, the, CG, the animals and stuff, or part the casting as well, like just those super famous voiceovers yeah. on characters that just didn't seem to really fit. Like they were all great at what they do, but they were just too famous that you can't like mm. not see Bill Murray's face, Scarlett Johansson, yeah, mm. that kind of thing. So I don't know, maybe if uh, Idris depends, Elba depends what the the casting's like, I guess mm. for one, but. Um, yeah, also, I just, I really, really fucking love the original Lion King. So, oh, yeah. You know, I kind of don't want to taint it. <laughs> mm. yeah. I actually like the, the second one as well. The second one was pretty good. I've the, never actually seen... Oh, the sequel with Simba's daughter and Scar's, like, bastard son. Mm. They like, fall in love and shit. He just looks just like him as well. And he ends up with a scar of his eye as well. That mm. that sequel was probably actually animated, I think, here in Australia. Wow! Because Disney used to have a um a st- animation studio in Sydney, mm. and um 
they did a heap of those like sequ- like Disney sort of straight to video sequels, like Lion King two, and I think there might have been like a Little Mermaid, mm. um, and a bunch of those ones. Yeah, I think my boss actually currently working on the show with me worked for Disney for a bit. No shit. Yeah, doing like effects animation stuff. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah, good dude. Yep. Gives you all the good jobs. Does. <laughs> yeah, it looks Legend. after me. Yeah, we could. Yeah. Um, I don't know when that movie's out. Next year, I guess. Yeah, it mm. must be. It'll be next year, I imagine. Yeah, I'll go see it. I'll, I'll give it a go. Why yeah. not? Try it. Why not? I said there's a lot of stuff I'll try, but I just haven't yet. <laughs> so many movies out there. But now we've we've just had uh, we've talked about it heaps before. We went and so, we went there and saw the Big Lebowski and everything. But the Star Theater here in town it's finally finished and it's just opened last weekend, just gone. And uh, they're playing some of the current sort of uh, award favorites. You know uh, what is it? Three Billboards. Mm-hmm. Um, what's that other one? I don't know. Oh, Darkest Hour. Oh, and they're playing Wizard of Oz as well. Paddington Two. I've heard that movie sick. Like, I actually can't wait to watch that movie because I fucking love the first one. That was, like, one of the better, like, family films, like, I've seen. Like, I love that movie, and it was great. And this second really? one's meant to be, like, even better. That went totally under ra- under the radar, didn't it? Well, mm. well, not in, like, in Britain, I think it did really well, didn't it? Like, mm. um, But in the US, it kind of just completely yeah. bombed. Like- it's not like it, it, it... It's not like a cheapy kind of family film where it's kind of, like... You know, it's they've just filmed it, like, it's not phoned in. Like, there's a lot of, like, uh, care and that that's actually gone into it. Yeah, it's mm. really, like, um, yeah, really sweet little movie. I loved it. I actually can't wait to watch the second one. I'm fucking stoked. Mm, nice. Yeah, so I love the first one. Mm. I'm going to go out and watch that one. Yeah, um, I was just sort of... It, it's. I think it's that style of family movie, that C, Mitch CG live footage, or live action kind of thing. Mm. Like, you know, you, you see your Smurfs and your Elvins and your Chipmunks and that kind of thing, and you kind of go, uh, nah, not for me. Mm. But, yeah, I've heard a few people talk about Paddington as being actually pretty cool. Yeah, it's it's a lot better, man. It's not like cartoony kind of Smurfs and shit, and, you know, it has that glossy fucking Hollywood sort mm. of overlay. You know, this is, you know, pommy British yep. family film. Yeah. A lot of love and care behind it. Mm. Fucking great. Paddington. Go out and watch it if you haven't seen it. Can't wait for Paddington 2. I think it's out next month. But it is currently playing at the Star, so maybe I should just who, go watch it who, on the big screen. Who um, does Paddington? Do you know? Uh, the voice. Fuck. What's his name? He played Q in um, Skyfall. Ben Ben oh. Wishaw, whatever his name is. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking awesome. Like, awesome voice. Like, perfect voice. Like, fits, like, really well. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Mm. Sweet. What's next? Uh the uh the most famous piece of like uh fan casting for it, like the most popular choice, Je- apparently Jessica Chastain is in talks to play the adult version of Beverly Marsh in It Chapter Two. Mm, cool. So that's great, because I'm a bit of a thing for Jessica Chastain, <laughs> as you know. Crimson <laughs> Peak, The Martian, yep. Miss Sloan, all those great movies that no one's seen. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon she'll, she'll get the part. I reckon she's a bit of a shoe in uh, One, because she's worked with Andy Muschietti before yep. on his first US film, Mama. She was in that. She played the lead in that. And um, she's actually, like, like since then, she's, like, very good friends with him. And she's, like, um, like BFFs with um, his wife. Like, they're, like, best of friends. So they're, yeah. like, in communication all the time. So... Ooh. Yeah, I think she's a... That sounds like a a, given then. Yeah, yeah, shoe in for this. So, yeah, I could, yeah, definitely see that, her playing a um, a grown-up Beverly in that film. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that'd be awesome. And there's a lot of other fan casting that there, you know, like Idris Elba and Chris Pratt and there are a few others and that as well. I can't even remember them. But, yeah, they were sort of the most popular um, picks for sort of the uh, the adult crew. Yep. Have you watched it again since we saw it at the cinema? Yeah, I watched it um, over Christmas, I think. Yep. Yeah. Loved it. Yep. Second time around, just just as much as the first time. Mm, so did I. I watched it again at, uh, yeah, Christmas time when I went down to my folks' place and my sister had just got it and uh, we watched it 
with her and yeah she she really liked it not really enjoyed it the second time around i picked it up on 4k since but because we had a staggered release so it came out in dvd and blu-ray and then like two or three weeks later it came out in 4k so i've got the 4k but i haven't actually watched it yet like every time i get a spare chance to watch a movie i'm like oh maybe i'll watch it but i'm like nah, no there's always something else to watch yeah like yeah. i'm sort of in the middle of all these different things trying like to I'm, get through a pile that you <laughs> yeah like i'm still trying to like i've got to finish altered carb and i'm only like four episodes into that yeah um mute has just been released on netflix so i really want to watch that so i reckon i'll get that to that in the next few days maybe over the weekend mm. but yeah there's there's just there's always something there's always something to watch you know yeah there mm. is Sure. Yeah, I've been watching, um, uh, I picked up, like, I went to one of our sort of, uh, uh, one of our cheaper sort of, um, variety shops and that, and they had, like, the DVD bins there, like, the cheap DVDs, and I went through them, and I found a couple of, um, you know, Jay and Silent Bob Get Old, like, live tour DVDs, the, oh. the, um, T-Bergen in the UK, and, uh, the Irish one, where they went to Ireland, so the last couple of days I've been watching their, um, those live shows and that which have been quite good um they pretty much just get on stage and they just you know conversate back and forward just like re- record a podcast on stage and there's a bit of interaction with the crowd and stuff they play a game at yeah. the end it's called let us fuck they make up these sex positions and they get people like from and then they have to go out the back with jason muse and they're like right come up with this sex position and then come back and then they perform it on stage which is actually really funny it's really funny <laughs> to watch but um, just, what was it, yesterday, I think it was yesterday morning by the time we found out, fucking Kevin Smith had a massive heart attack, mm. almost died. I nearly died myself because I'm a huge Kevin Smith fan. Like, I, I worship the guy. He's like the original, like, geek. He's like the one of the sweetest guys on the planet. And no one really gives him the time of day, but he's, he's a fucking dead set legend. And, yeah, he almost died, like, doing a stand-up show, recording a stand-up show. Yeah, that's that's crazy. When I saw it. I think I only saw it because you'd written a comment under his status thing on Facey, yeah. and I was like, oh, fuck, this mm. is for real. Holy shit. Yeah, like, he he was doing two live shows, so he recorded the first show, the two-hour set, and then, like, getting toward the end of it, he wasn't feeling very well. He said he was feeling nauseous, and he went out the back, and he threw up, and he it was a bit, like, he said it was, like, a bit bile and stuff, so he's, like, he just thought he had, like, a bit of food poisoning, like he drank some bad milk or something. Mm. And he was like, he just felt real heavy on the chest and he just, like, it was an effort to, like, get you know, like a full breath. He couldn't catch his breath. He was breathing really shallow and he just went and laid down and eventually they took him to the hospital and they told him he'd had a massive heart attack. And if he didn't come to the hospital, if he stayed to do the second show, he would have died. He would have died on stage. Um, apparently he's, I think it's the ATL artery or the main artery to his heart was 100% blocked. Jesus um, Christ. So, yeah. And no he, more fucking uh, movies for, for yeah. Kevin Smith. <laughs> well, the guys had like a massive lifestyle change in the last like year or two. I don't remember. It was probably about two years ago. Yeah. He got kicked off that flight, you know, because he was too fat to fly, you know, inverted yeah. commas. There was that big thing for the last of for like two days. Yeah. So he had a big lifestyle change and he walks every day and he lost like 80 pounds, 80, 90 pounds, mm. something like that. And he's looking pretty good. Like he's still like a bigger guy, but he's like so much better than he used to. Oh, look. yeah. You could see it in this photo at the hospital where he mm. sort of did that little selfie. Yeah, a lot like, slimmer in the face and I everything. almost and didn't recognize him there. Yeah, yeah, he's looking a lot better. But... Like, he posted a video on Instagram and YouTube this morning, just like a 20-minute video from the hospital, just, you know, telling everyone what happened, and he was just going through the story, and the guy was like, he's like, I, I was never panicked. He's like, I never felt like I had a heart attack. They told me I had a heart attack. He's just like, oh, shit, really? He's like, this is this is what it is? And he was like, he he was more worried that they were trying to get his shirt off. He's like, no, he didn't want them to, like, take his shirt off because he's real, like, you know, embarrassed and sensitive about his weight and stuff. And yeah. They told him they had to, like, shave his groin and stuff. He's like, I don't want you to, like, see my dick. He's like, you just tell me where you want to shave and I'll just, like, move the underwear and you can shave that. Because they had to, like, cut his groin and put a stent in there yep. to, like, open up the artery and stuff. And he said he's doing real, really well. Like, it'd only been, like, a day or two and he's, like, sleeping in the hospital and he's up and walking around. But, you know, he's got to convalesce for the next week. And, mm. yeah, it's actually, like, really inspiring. The guy's just, like, when they told him he'd had a heart attack because... He said he, his number one fear was dying because mm. his father had a heart attack and he died screaming, apparently. So that was what he was always afraid of. Like, he was afraid of dying, but he said, you know, like, 
when they told him he'd had a heart attack, he said he felt, you know, very content. Like, he's like, you know, I've had a good life. Like, he's like, I've lived my dream. Mm. I've done all these amazing things. He's like, I've done all these amazing things. I've directed these films. I've got to direct all these TV shows. I've done all these podcasts. I've traveled the world. I've talked to so many good people and interacted with so many, like, amazing fans and stuff. He's like, you know, if I were to go right now, he's like, you know, that'd be okay. I've had a great life. He's like, you know, he's like, obviously I'd miss my wife and my daughter because I wouldn't get to see. And he got like a bit choked up when he was talking about that. He started to tear up a bit. And he's like, the only thing I regretted is that, you know, if I was going to die, I didn't have a chance to make Jay and Silent Bob reboot. He's like, what a, what a good one to go out on. That would have been, he said. But he's like, no, he just reported from the hospital and that. He's like, now I'm just the guy who's like, I got to take like a lot of pills and stuff. He's like, like my mom. And I've just got to, like, take blood thinners and stuff. And he's like, i got to go to, like, a, like um, cardiologist and that every now and then. And he's like, I just have to take it easy for the next week. And, you know, he's like, I'm not allowed to drive. But, you know, he's doing good. He was walking around the hospital room. And, yeah. I so, wonder like, if he has to do some further lifestyle changes. I think he in, will, in yeah. The way yeah. Of, like, the way he works. Because, I mean... He seems like the kind of dude who's he works around the constantly. Clock. He does like yeah. three different podcasts a week. Yep. Like he's just come back from like directing an episode of The Flash. He was doing like a stand up show. He did Fat Man on Batman on the weekend, recorded that, mm. and then he was doing the two stand up shows. He said he was meant to go and direct the series finale of The Goldbergs. Mm. this week but he can't get to do that now he's in pre-production for jay and silent bob reboot and yeah the guy records like three different podcasts a week he does hollywood babylon uh fat man on batman and jay and silent bob get old mm. so like the guy works fucking heaps so yeah it might be time to just like cut back that workload a little bit and high pressure jobs like directing and shit yeah you'd be like you got to take it pretty easy after that. So, oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. For sure. I th- he plays the character of that kind of, like, stone dude um, a bit. But, yeah, I imagine his life's actually pretty fucking hectic. Like, mm. yeah. In yeah, reality. for sure. I mean, like, when we talk about we've had a, a busy week, you know, it's probably a quarter of what <laughs> that guy fits into his week, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm just like, you know, when I first read it because i just read kevin smith has massive heart attack i was just like holy fuck like i just saw on instagram like four or five hours ago like he was getting ready to do his stand-up thing yeah and i was like yeah like that fucking smith you legend fucking but i'm just so glad that he's still like walking among us because the the guy's like an inspiration like Mm. people do give him shit you know about his career and everything and that but i mean the guy does more and has accomplished more than half the other people in hollywood ever will yeah, and he he brings guys along with him to you know he brings people along with him, mm. up with him you know like mm. you know th- like where would uh, fucking Ben Affleck and shit be without Kevin Smith you know like yeah he, you know he, the, he's he's forged some pretty fucking big careers over time yeah for these sure guys, yeah and I mean um with Jess and Muse um Jan Son Bob get old the whole reason they do that podcast every every week it's like. They said on these DVDs and that it's like an intervention show mm. for Jason Mewes because he's, you know, because he was a drug addict, drug addict for so many years and he finally got off the drugs and stuff and he came up with the idea for the podcast. So, like, you know, once a week we get together, we talk about your life, we talk about how you're going and your recovery. They ask him, you know, how many days he's been sober and he gets to talk about his life and all these different – like, he's very candid about – you know, mm. being on drugs and all these different situations he's been through and all of it's just like all the sex he's had and everything. It's like really funny, but you know, they talk about on the DVD and stuff, like on the, one of the live shows, they're like, you know, with the, the opportunities you've had with like, um, John Son Bob get old mm. is like, you know, they've just bought a house. Like him and his wife were able to buy a house like, he's able to, you know, um, educate other people sort of about drugs and talk about his story and everything. Mm. And he has more opportunities to, like, travel the world. You know, he's got money coming in. Like I said, by the time that DVD came out, you know, they just bought a house. You know, he's had a daughter in the last couple of years and everything in that. And, you know, it's, um, yeah, it's, like, a really positive thing. So, you know, that's, like, something he's doing for his friend, mm. you know. That's, like, if, you know, you or I were a drug addict 
and we got off the, the source and shit and, you know, we were doing a podcast every week to, you know, just check up on you, how you're going, get, talk about it, get it out, you know. Yeah. This is something to sort of keep you on track, on to help keep you narrow. on track. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you got money coming in, so, you know, it's it's a positive thing in your life, you know, mm. and you want to keep positive things going. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, fucking, I take my hat off to him. Yeah. Fucking legend. I'm still glad you were with us, Kev, because, yeah, the world would be a much sadder place without you in it. It would. It Hashtag the world needs Kevin Smith. Sure does. Mm. When did you... When? Oh, here's a question. When did you first get onto Kevin Smith? Uh, let's see. I I think it was Dogma, honestly. Yep. Or it might have been More Rats. No, I think it's Dogma. I remember... Uh, yeah, I think it was Dogma. Yep. Mm. We got onto Dogma, and I really enjoyed that film. And just like having, you know, like cable TV, like Ozstar and stuff, you know, the, the movies and that playing, and mm. and Dogma and stuff. And I was a fan of Kevin Smith. And then um, Mark, our mate Mark, who's been on the show before in our thing, thirty fifth anniversary retrospective, yep. he bought me the Kevin Smith box set for my birthday, which had Clerks and Chasing Amy in it. Yeah. And so that was my first introduction to Clerks. That was like the first time I ever watched that film. Yeah. And it's just like, this is like, I've never seen a movie like this before. It's literally just people having conversations. Mm. You know, it's it's not like high-end bloody comedy where they're getting into mischief and hijinks and stuff. I mean, the funeral scene is probably the most amount of hijinks they yeah. get into in that movie. But it's literally just like... Two guys who work in, you know, a convenience store and a video store that are right next to each other and they hang out and they just have conversations about regular life and regular people and movies and all this Mm. sort of shit. So it was really sort of like down to earth kind of, uh, yeah, I'd never seen a movie like that before. And then Chasing Amy, which was like this love story where this guy falls in love with this lesbian and, you know, we've all seen that movie. Mm. But the ultimate sort of like... Kevin Smith film for me, like personally, was Jane Silent Bob Strike Back. Like yeah. I remember when that movie came out and I bought it on DVD and I watched it. And it was so funny and I just had the <laughs> best time. And then I started working with this guy. I got a job in a call center and yeah. the guy who actually sat next to me, like we became like real fast friends and we're still friends to this day. And him and I both love Jane Silent Bob Strike Back. Yeah. So we would get together and we would get on the piss and we knew every line from that movie and we would just put it on and we would just sit next to each other and just recite the entire movie from start to finish. <laughs> like, we did that heaps of times. Yeah. And then, oh, man, we we had lots of great nights drinking, just like Kevin Smith. We had this one night where we watched Caddyshack and we we made up a drinking game. We were, like, we were watching Caddyshack and we are like, let's do a drinking game. Like, okay, what can it be? Anytime any, someone says Caddy, or the gopher turns up, or someone swings a golf club, you've got to have a drink. I was pissed in, like, the first half hour because <laughs> I was drinking, like, I think it was, like, I don't know. I ran out of booze or something. I was drinking, like, vodka and Coke, yeah. and I was just, like, I, I got fucked up real quick, <laughs> like, real quick. I don't even think I made it to the end of that movie, to be new, honest. But New drinking game for all our listeners. <laughs> yeah. We, oh, fuck. We should do that as, like, a audio commentary one time, like, like what? Do a Caddyshack. drinking game. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, yeah. We'll okay. Caddyshack. We'll do that game. We'll do that. Oh, fuck. Oh. What are we drinking though, Jerry? Uh, yep. Okay. <laughs> or maybe we'll just maybe we'll just stick to beers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll decide what kind of uh, what what kind of uh, mood we're in on the day. <laughs> All right. Maybe we'll do that sooner rather than later. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that was really my first introduction to Kevin. Mm. I followed him from then on. You know, like. Clerks 2, um, I haven't seen Jersey Girl, I've watched Cop Out, um, I fucking love Tusk, like, Tusk is the kind of most unsettling, disturbing, like, fucked up kind of movie, but god, I love it. I don't think I've seen Tusk, mm. yeah. Tusk is great, and- Red State. I really cool. like Red State. Mm. Michael Parks is fucking, he owns that movie from mm. start to finish. Yeah. And John Goodman's great in that movie as well. Yeah. But yeah, I, I love all those flicks. I even watched Yoga Hoses probably, jeez, probably about three months ago. Oh, it was on about Stan. That one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I watched that. Not his best by any stretch, but, no. you know, for what that movie is and who it's geared towards, you know, he's like, I, I, he's like, I made a movie for teenage girls. Yeah. And like, even Kevin Smith's like talked about it because he really like downplays himself. 
you know, the guy really downplays himself. He's like, oh, you know, he's like, he's always like taking the piss out of himself. He's like, you've got this guy over here who made this movie and you're talking to the guy who made Tusk or whatever. And I'm like, come on, man, Tusk is a great movie. <laughs> but yeah, like he said himself that he's had like mothers and stuff contact him as like, like my daughter just like loves watching yoga hoses. Like she watches it like all the time. She's seen it like 10 or 15, 20 times and she knows every line and, and you know that's who he made the movie for you know yeah. like he he wrote this movie like for his daughter to star in and that movie's really for teenage girls and like i could see that when i was watching it like it didn't all like land in that with me because i've like been watching kevin smith for like the last nearly you know 20 years yeah but yeah that movie definitely has an audience it's geared towards but yeah jane Silent bob reboot that's like the one i'm looking forward to yeah but yeah there's also moose jaws like he's talking about moose jaws yep. which is um another interesting film that he was working on and stuff that's been put on the back burner for jane Silent bob reboot but yep. you know now i'm just happy that the guy's like still living so he yeah. can make that movie and you know just keep making awesome content because i mm. always watch fat man on batman i started listening to Jane Silent Bob get old, mm. you know. I don't really, like, watch or listen to sort of Hollywood Babylon, but, you know, I might sort of give it a go. I only have so much time during the week, mm. you know. But, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, I I love the guy. I love his shit. I love what he does. He's what about, very what about optimistic you? and positive kind of guy. Yeah, too. he's just yeah. like, he's like one of the sweetest guys and no one fucking gives him the time of day. Mm. Mm. There's this whole, like, culture of, I mean, I'm guilty of it too, you know, you nerdy guys who like bag shit out or uh you know bring things down i don't like to try and do it as much as i can but you know you never really hear kevin smith say a bad word about anything do you <laughs> like he he's no, always he's only always... about ben affleck yeah <laughs> and bruce willis <laughs> but, but he's always... eased up on that yeah 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 but yeah um no first time for me kevin smith um oh, i can pinpoint it pretty well actually i think i was about 15 and um I had this this kid move to our our school like a new kid from Canberra, and he had like an old, older brother. And see, I was the eldest out of my family, so like I had no one to look up to or up the chain, no one to give me kind of like ideas. Uh, yeah, like, hey man, what, like this is really cool. Check yeah, this out. check this movie out or something. I had to find listen that to shit. this album. But yeah, this guy had an older brother, so um, but uh, he'd moved down to Tassie without his older brother, but he had all the knowledge of his older brother. So he comes, uh, you know, came out and stayed out at his place one night, and we went to the video shop and went crazy and bought like you know, or rented a, a million videos. But he introduced me big time to Kevin Smith that weekend. Like we we hired like fucking Clerks, Mall Rats, Chasing Amy, and Dogma, I think. Mm. Um, and then probably a bit of like fucking uh, wild things or something. <laughs> yeah, so, so now you're talking. Shit, you know, <laughs> but um, <laughs> as you fucking do. Fucking hell, that movie. Yeah, you'd have to like uh, rent, like book it out six months in advance because it'd yeah. be like at some other at some other teenage boy's fucking house. Yeah. You watch like <laughs> and the tapes all worn through. <laughs> you watch like something silly to start, yeah, and then when it gets a bit later, mum and dad go to bed. You put wild things on; it's a bit saucy, and then everyone just sits there in silence while it's on. And then you have to watch something funny to like, so everyone's just like boners disappear. <laughs> <laughs> the tent poles go back down. <laughs> this is a that's actually a funny story because it's really funny because you you and I, Pat. Not necessarily Mark. Mark worked, but he lived in the town. You know, he was living in the town we were living in at the time. But yeah. our last night, well, our second last day of college, uh, year 12, we are all 18. You know, it was time. The, the next day of school was our last day. We went to the cinema that night and we saw The Matrix Revolution. Yeah. And <laughs> we watched that because we'd been to the bottle shop previous and we'd bought beer and stuff and dropped it off at our mate mark's house and we were leaving the cinema and i remember it vividly bob was standing at my right it had just been raining a little bit so all the ground was damp and we were walking back to um my mate's little boxy two-door car which like five of us were getting in and i sort of turned to bob and i'm like oh i guess it's beer o'clock then and bob's like yep let's do it <laughs> so we went like back that. to I'm at Mark's house and we're celebrating like this tomorrow's our last day of school like we never have to go to school again after this 
We all jump in the air and free, freeze frame. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Credits roll. <laughs> so we get back and, fuck, I can't even remember how we started off. We watched a movie or something. I can't remember what we watched. We were fucking around. We we're playing video games, playing Halo. Yeah, I think there was a bit of Halo in the Yeah, we're yeah. Drink, drinking lots of booze. We're all getting drunk. Everybody sort of scatters and stuff. And then I remember saying to, it was getting late in the night. It was like 1 a.m. or something. And Mark lived... He he lived with another guy who was his roommate or whatever, and he wasn't there at the time, though. And I said to Mark, I'm like, have you got any porn? And he's like, I'm just putting some on. He had like this video <laughs> cassette. I'm just like, putting some yeah. on. <laughs> so he put in like this taped video cassette that like someone's uh. had pay TV. They bought the adult channel for the night, <laughs> and they've just recorded what they can. So we're all like boisterous and loud and having the best night of our lives, listening to music, playing Halo, eating food. As soon as this tape goes in and presses play, everyone's just sitting there in silence. Just goes quiet. No one's fucking- Watching. Because we're a bunch of fucking nerds. (laughs) We're a bunch of fucking boys. (laughs) And everyone's too scared to say a fucking word. (laughs) And we're just sitting there and I just remember it was- it wasn't it was even that good. So uncomfortable. And yeah, and like, yeah. And then someone like had like, to get up and go to the toilet. And like, if you're not back in 30 seconds, they know what you're doing. Yeah. But it was that, that, it was that like shit you get in the hotel room, like that real soft core, um, porn stuff where yeah. nothing, nothing really happens for like, the, I remember the end, the end bit of the tape was like, they were outside and they were just like naked and painting. They had like paint yeah. all over them and stuff. You remember that? <laughs> yeah, va- very vaguely. Vaguely, that, yeah. yeah. Through the haze of drunkenness yeah. and twenty years of fucking life. Holy shit! Mm. <laughs> yeah, that was the most boring porn I think it was ever. It was fucking horrible. And then we were very seedy the next day. Yeah. Very, very, very seedy. Got to school. <laughs> great night. Most of the night was pretty great, <laughs> except for that porn. So anyway, back to your Kevin Smith story. We talked about wild things. That was a diversion. We went off on a massive tangent (laughs) about, you know, stuff called porn. Please continue. I don't even know where I was. Uh, Uh, Renting out Kevin Smith movies and wild things. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. The guy from Canberra. Yeah. So we, I stayed out at his place for like the whole weekend and we just fucking watched a heap of his movies. And uh, I think Dogma was the first one I watched. Mm. And I was like. That's fucking hilarious, and it's like it is a fucking funny movie for for me. Like at fifteen, I don't think I'd ever seen a movie quite like that either. Yeah, it just hit like all the right notes in that kind of nerdiness that you never saw in Hollywood movies back then. Yeah, but then it was also and like all the the very smart and clever like religious undertones. Yeah, and you had like Alan Rickman as like Metatron and stuff, like the voice of God, and he was just like totally like androgynous. He had like no genitals or anything. He's just like you've got Alan Rickman standing there with his pants down, his hands on his hips, and he's like, "Look at me, he's like I'm a Ken doll." <laughs> yeah. Whatever the line was, it's been so long since I've seen it. But yeah, and, and Clerks was the one that really sort of blew me away as well because that was kind of like because I was always a creative kid as well. And so the idea of seeing a, a, a f- like polished, fully like movie, but it looks like it could have been made by you or I sort of mm. thing, like, you know, um, that really inspired me. I was like, fuck, you know, that like, there's guys out there just doing this stuff. Like, yeah. Yeah. It was really cool. And Alar- Linus Morissette as God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was great. Um, I went to the cinema and saw Zack and Mary make a porno. Mm. That was a lot of fun. I did actually. I really enjoyed that movie. It was just like these two people. They they're broke and everything, and they're like, "We need to get this money." And they work in a coffee shop or whatever, and they just like make this porno. And it's it was it was gross, but it was funny. Like the anal scene or whatever. She had they had like a burrito the night before. Or whatever it was. It's just like <laughs> fuck. Oh, I that was a lot of fun. Like going to the cinema and seeing that. I miss going to the cinema and seeing Kevin Smith films because we live. We live in a small city, inverted commas, but it's really just like a large town. Mm. But, you know, we don't we don't get those films, you know? We don't get the small indie shit. Like, no. we just got The Shape of Water for two weeks, and I've just fucking missed it. But thank God it's going to be playing at the Star Theatre, so perhaps I'll pay my 18 bucks and go and watch it there before think, it, like, hits the home release. I think the Star release. might hopefully uh, mm. hold down the fort for us finally with that sort of stuff. I think. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. 
they only have the one screen, so they're doing like one screening a day, but they're mixing it up. So, you know, they'll show this movie, uh, you know, like in the morning and the next day they'll show it at night and the day after that they'll show it in the afternoon. So, you know, you get that chance to get there and see it if you can only see it at a certain time. You know, there's a day in the week where you can get there and see it. Yeah. And it's very old school. They've got, like, the upstairs, like, uh, balcony area where all the seating and that is. Mm. But downstairs as well, they've got, like, lots of two-seater couches with, like, coffee tables next to them. So, like, couples can get their own couches. You know, families of three, you know, whatever, can all get, like, a couch each. And it's all spaced out. And you just look up at the screen. And... Bring your own, like, single malt whiskey and just... Yeah, that's what, like, what I was saying. Like, even, like, you and Haley could, like, you know, take bubs in the pram and everything, you know, if you wanted to do that. You know, the option there mm. and they got the old school popcorn and everything and they got the cafe and you can buy they got like pastries and stuff and you can buy um you know booze and that there so i think that's a place we're gonna have to spend a lot more time yeah definitely mm. i'm i'm mega keen to see what it looks like now it's uh now yeah it's me too i haven't done. i haven't been there i'd really like to go mm. just to um fuck i'd go watch the wizard of oz man mm. yeah yeah Back More to- Big Lebowski, do it again. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah, fuck yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, did you watch the Clerks animated series? Uh, only little bits of it because I mean it came out at a time where you couldn't fucking access that stuff unless yeah. it was on TV. Kind it was of. on Oz Star. It was on like the Comedy Channel for a little bit. Yeah, and- I think that's the only places I really ever caught it was like mm. at mates' places when they have Oz Star because I never had it. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Mm. You got a favorite Kevin Smith movie? Would it be Dogma? I think the one I've watched the most is Clerks Two. Mm-hmm. I think th- I think just at the time when that came out, I was the right age for it. <laughs> like because I think I missed all the other stuff and I was kind of playing catch up. But when Clerks Two dropped, I was like twenty or something like that, and it was right in my like my time of sort of discovering his stuff. And uh, when that came out, I, I fucking loved it. Mm. Loved the shit out of it. And it had all the kind of Lord of the Rings versus Star, uh, Star, Star, Star Wars. Star Wars. Yeah. Um, all that kind of stuff in it. So, yeah. Um, I like that and I like uh, more rats as mm. well. Yeah. Would you like a chocolate covered pretzel? <laughs> and Stan Lee. Stan Lee has like a massive cameo in that movie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Stan Lee's actually said that's like his favorite part in any movie he's done because he got to play himself. Oh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> which is actually really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, fuck, hats off to Kevin Smith, because he was like, he was like the original movie nerd. He was like a movie nerd before being a movie nerd was cool. Because mm. we're cool now, are we? Well, Don't think so. Because everybody's movie in, nerds now. In, yeah, in certain circles you are, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> no, I love the guy, and I'm just, I'm so happy he's still like on this mortal coil with the yeah. rest of us, but... yeah. Yeah, lifestyle changes. He said he was talking about perhaps it was about time he goes vegan. And I was just thinking about it. I was like, fuck, maybe I should go vegan. Kevin's gone vegan. I should go vegan. There's actually this photo of me from like fucking nearly 10 years ago. I look like Kevin Smith. Like I took this photo. I've got like the beard and this big fucking bushy jacket and that on. And I'll, I look at it and I'm like, I look like Kevin Smith in that photo. <laughs> I should track that photo down. That's on, that's on my Facebook. Yeah, I should track that down. But yeah, I'm so glad. Jane Soul Bob Strike Back. That's that'll always be the movie for me. Yep. The clit. The clit. <laughs> the clit. <laughs> I am the clit commander. <laughs> Look at this fucking face. Remember this fucking face. <laughs> oh, that scene. And the jewel the jewelry heist and stuff and man. Don't you know fast food makes girls fart? <laughs> and there was one guy, the the first guy. I ever saw in a movie, his name was Brent. It's played by Sean William Scott. <laughs> you know, he's in the van with the girls and that, and he plays the song, Hey, Mr. Science Guy, don't spray that aerosol in my eye. <laughs> yeah, they're going to, like, liberate all the monkeys and the animals and shit from the, um, from the like, animal testing thing, but they're actually going to rob the jewelry, the jewelry <laughs> place and whatever next door. And then they <laughs> throw him out of the van. This this guy who said he'd fuck a sheep. I would never fuck a sheep. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like the first guy I ever saw in a movie. His name was Brent. So that that that's another reason why that movie has like a special little place in my heart. Yeah, there's no movies out there with the guy called Bob in them. Nowhere. There's plenty of them. None. There's heaps. I've I've checked. I've watched them. All. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've checked. I've watched them all. Yeah. Isn't that that Bill Murray movie? What about Bob? No. No. Nah, no. You no. dreaming? You dreaming? Definitely mate. not incredible. I think I think you're thinking of Caddyshack. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, we should do a Caddyshack. 
drinking game. Mm. Maybe even like a Kevin Smith drinking game. We should watch like Jay and Silent Bob Strike Mac Strike Back anytime it says like Snooch or Snoog and stuff. Any time anybody says fuck. Because at the start, man. you know, the fuck song at the fuck, 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 mother, mother, fuck, mother, mother, fuck, fuck. <laughs> at the beginning, we'd be, <laughs> be smashed. In, we'd be toasted. In seconds. We'd be toasted in the first five minutes. <laughs> Sounds like a good idea. <laughs> okay, let me ask you this question. Right. Kevin Sorry. Smith, like. Right. I, was, I was away from the microphone there. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> okay, so if you could see. Kevin Smith tackle sort of any project in the world. Like, he had the chance to direct sort of any film, any genre, or anything. Is there something you would like to see him do? Like, something you gravitate toward? Like, if he had the chance to do anything, I'd like to see Kevin Smith do that. Ooh, that's that's a tough one on the spot. I think, um, I think maybe, yeah, go back to sort of a, a fantasy kind of thing. Like a, uh, I don't know. You see, because Dogma was kind of cool in that kind of high. It's almost a fantasy kind of film. Mm. Like maybe, maybe like a maybe like a uh, dark sci-fi, like an alien monster movie or something. You know, because he mm. he does tackle that kind of horror movie. You see it in like Red State and stuff, like quite well. Mm. But then inject a bit of that kind of Kevin Smith humor in there too. Mm. I think that bit that might be kind of cool. And yeah, him being a massive nerd, I think like, yeah, I think he could pull it off. Wouldn't go quite the the way of like Thor Ragnarok, maybe, but like it might be skirting that kind of like fun line of it, and then having a bit more of a sort of scary undertone to it, as opposed to like Marvel's kind of action movie kind of yeah. kind of deal. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, I like that idea. Yeah, I like that idea. What about was, you? The guy, the guys asked obviously. Um, avid comic fan and a massive comic nut you just gotta watch anything they review all the newest marvel movies justice league everything and he's very candid about everything and that's one of the reasons i love to watch fat man on batman sort of every week or every other week like mm. when they get the opportunity to record it i you know i was thinking i was just thinking about this the other day actually you know like he talks about marvel he talks about kevin feige you know he's he's called kevin feige one of the best like storytellers out there at the moment like everything he's done with the marvel cinematic universe he's you know he's been the guy with you know his hand on the reins like guiding the ship you know Mm. and i was thinking i was like you know in this day and age you know kevin smith would probably never get the chance to direct a marvel movie Mm. which is unfortunate but i would like to see because i miss the marvel shorts like the short films that came on like the blu-rays and the dvds like every time a movie came out like they had the three like Agent Coulson ones, they had the Hail to the King after Iron Man 3, you know, they had all these, like, short films and that they did. Mm. I would love to see Marvel bring back the short films, like the MCU short films, and I would love to see Kevin Smith get the chance to direct direct one, and maybe even write and direct one. Yeah. So, they're only probably, what, four, five, six minute shorts, maybe longer, Mm. up to 15 minutes, something like that. I would love to see him get his hands on one of those and have a go at that. Mm. That was what I would really love to see. Because you even hear about so much about, because the guy is so active in like like the pop culture and like the geek realm, then I mean, the guy's got like indirect influence on everything because he's everywhere and he's talking about everything all the time. Like, yeah. if he's like seen a movie, he'll post a review on Facebook and and on YouTube. Yep. Like if um he'll talk on Fat Man on Batman, Hollywood Babylon, all these podcasts, everything he's got, his Facebook page, his Instagram, Twitter. You know, he talks about everything everywhere. The guy's everywhere. Mm. You know, he indirectly, like, influenced Thor Ragnarok. Because Big time. after Massively. Yeah, after because after trailer. the Thor The Dark World, you know, he sort of, you know, said his two cents about it. You know, it, you know Chris Hemsworth ended up hearing about it. You know, he even... I think um, Kevin's the reason why, you know, like, he cut his hair. Because I was thinking, like, I don't know, maybe he just made the passing comment. He's like, cut his fucking hair or whatever. And, you know, that's... The, like, Hemsworth heard that. And, you know, like, that's the reason why... You know, they changed up Thor so much. They're like, you know, we've got to do something different. We've got to, you know, even if we try to make it more of a comedy instead of a serious, like, Shakespearean, Asgardian, you know, end of the world thing. Let's make it a bit more silly. Let's make it a bit more fun. Let's completely... People think we're going to go this way. Let's fucking go this way instead. Mm. So it doesn't matter. Like, the guy has, even if he's not directly involved, the guy has indirect influence, like, in everything. Mm-hmm. And people listen to him too. Like, yep. I see on, you know, like, Geek Tyrant, um, Movie Web, like, all these different sites. Every time Kev just, like, 
post his two cents about it, that's a news. Ar- that's a news article worthy. Yep. This is what Kevin Smith said about Black Panther. Mm. This is what Kevin Smith said about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two. And it's just like it's not even like a serious comment or a question someone's asked him. It's just his two cents, and they pick out those three or four sentences that he said and post it. This is Kevin Smith's idea. Oh, this is just a. It's just a passing, like, comment he made on his show, just, like, spitballing, like, you and I are, just back and forward. It's mm. just, you know, I thought it'd be cool if, you know, they fucking, like, cut his hair and, like, get get away from Earth, you know. Mm. We've made a million of those. Just passing things. comments. Yeah. Obviously, with Red Dead 2, they heard us. They listened to that Red Dead Redemption episode. <laughs> yeah, Rockstar. And then two weeks later, we got their Red Dead. Like, see? They listened to us <laughs> in three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I'd love to see him. Get his hand on something Marvel. Like, the guy's written for Marvel. He's written comics. He's written Daredevil. He's written Spider-Man. I would love to see him just, even if it was just, like, a short film or something like that. Just to get his really hands well on it. in the, the, the current Marvel, like, film mm. thing at the moment. Because it is, like, that, that, yeah, that comedy versus kind of really well-made action stuff as well. Mm. So, Yeah. But the guy does work a lot. Like, he hosts for IMDb. Mm. Like, they've just started this new show on the History Channel. He's hosting that um, anytime. Like, he's meant to go to the Oscars next week for the sort of IMDb, like, red carpet. Like, he covers everything for IMDb. Like, at Sundance and stuff, he was on the IMD boat, and he was just, like, interviewing celebrities, like, all week about movies and everything. And Is that what it's called, the IMD boat? I am. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. Is that what I said? Must be. But yeah, the Internet IMDb movie. boat. Yeah, it's just like the Dollar guy boat. fucking works a lot. And yeah, I would hate to see him shuffle off and you know to the next realm. But yeah, the world needs Kevin Smith. Mm, definitely. Mm. He. I reckon he'd make a pretty fun Batman too. Thinking about that. Well, he's already been Blunt Man, so mm. he's had the cap with the uh, the horns and that. Pretty much, the and same. the utility belt. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Bearded Mountain, I think that'll do it. Bearded Mountain. <laughs> you like that? That I just do. hit me like an epiphany the other week. I'll run with it. <laughs> yeah, the Bearded Mountain. We'll make a t-shirt out of that. And if anyone, anyone gives me shit, I'll cross their fucking skulls. <laughs> <laughs> like a fucking grape. <laughs> like a grape. <laughs> All right, Bobby Baxter, if people want to find you online, where can people find you? Ooh, I'm going to switch it up this week because... Here we I go. Released, I know what you're going to say. I've released my comic online on Webtoon. Oh, no, I thought you were going to talk about Vero. No. You're on the bandwagon. <laughs> I am I am on the Vero bandwagon. No, please there's... tell me about Brown Fury on Webtoons, please. Yes, so uh well the comic's been out for ages now, so I was like, you know, um I gotta build this Brown Fury audience back up because uh I'm really getting that itch to make more, but um I mean it's sort of a juggling act with work and kids and all that sort of podcasts and all that sort of stuff at the moment, but I was like, well, how about in the meantime, I build up a bit of a kind of web audience and, and prep myself for the next issue kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, you can go to Webtoon. Um, I think it's Webtoon.com. Webtoons, isn't it? Webtoon. I think the logo says Webtoon, but then I think everyone calls it Webtoons. So, okay. Uh, look for one of those. It's Google search Brown Fury Webtoon. I think it's like a South Korean company. So, um, Maybe there's like a translation thing going on there. Yeah. But um, yeah, just check out, uh, look up Brown Fury on there and you can read the whole comic for free. And Awesome. I, I'm still selling them um, on my website as well. So if you want to go old school and pick up a f- physical copy, I sign them all and send them out to you. So yeah, go to bobbybaxter.com for that. Mm. And uh, yeah, Bobby Baxter cartoons on the other social medias, um, except for Vero, which I everyone's fucking jumping on the bandwagon yeah so i've just started up an account there i'm like fuck it i'll i'll, I'll give it a shot um, what are you just bobby baxter on vero yeah just bobby baxter on there so yeah sweet see how it goes yeah. awesome and if you want to find us online you can find us on facebook facebook.com forward slash beating pod if you want to listen to the show we're on soundcloud and itunes and youtube and we're also uh available through like all these podcasting apps and that as well i downloaded podbean recently and we're on there we filter through from itunes so if you want to listen to if you want to download like any of these apps i think it's like podbean i don't know uh what are the other ones pod network fuck i don't know I, they're on there just look on your app store all these <laughs> podcast apps and search for the beta geeks you probably your bloody us. self you drongo yeah half these apps you can download the show and that on there as well so and if pat was here he's like buy a t-shirt um you can get on t-pub i can buy a t-shirt 
Uh, we're also on Instagram and on Twitter at BitGeeksPod. Yeah. All right, so that'll do it from us. Uh, I guess we'll see you all next week. On the Beard of Geeks. <laughs> That's us. <laughs> hey. hey. <laughs> you idiot. <laughs>